learning a second front-end framework should be easy. If you've already mastered React and you're familiar with all of its principles, picking up Vue shouldn't be that hard. I'm going to break down Vue's core concepts and syntax, comparing them directly with React examples so you can smoothly transition your skills. We'll cover over 20 key concepts, including reactivity, templating, lifecycle, and component composition. By the end of this video, you'll be confident enough to start writing Vue code. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in. Let's start by comparing how state is declared in React versus Vue. In React, you typically use the useState hook. In Vue 3, with the Composition API, you'd use the ref function. Here, the ref function makes name reactive. Notice how in Vue, the syntax within the template uses double curly braces to bind the value. To update state in React, you typically use the useState hook along with the useEffect hook to update state after the component mounts. In Vue, the update is even more straightforward. After declaring name as a ref, we simply assign a new value to name that value directly. Vue's reactivity system automatically tracks this change and updates the DOM accordingly. React relies on use effect to handle side effects, whereas Vue's reactivity makes it easy to update state directly within your setup script. Let's talk about computed state. Essentially, state derived from other state values. In React, Computed state is usually handled by performing calculations directly within the component's render method. Here, we use useState to set the initial count to 10, and then we simply calculate double count as count times 2. React recalculates double count every time the component renders. In Vue, we have something called computed properties. Instead of recalculating double count every time the component renders, Vue's computed property efficiently caches the result until the dependent count value changes. This allows Vue to optimize performance by recalculating double count only when necessary. So while React recalculates on every render, Vue's computed property is smart enough to do it only when needed, making your app more efficient. Let's take a look at templating in React and Vue, starting with the simplest example. In React, your component is a function that returns JSX. React uses JSX, which allows you to write HTML-like syntax directly within your JavaScript code. In Vue, we use a dedicated template block to define our HTML structure. This keeps the markup separated from the logic, which will typically go in a script block. The template syntax in Vue is very similar to regular HTML, making it intuitive for developers to use. So while React blends HTML and JavaScript together with JSX, Vue keeps them distinct, separating the template from the logic for better readability. In React, you have a few options for styling. Here's a simple example that uses both external CSS and inline styles. In this example, we import an external CSS file and use a class name of title to style the h1 element. For the button, we apply inline styles directly in JSX using a JavaScript object. In Vue, we apply styles similarly. The class title is used in the h1 element just like in React. However, Vue offers something extra. Scoped styles. By adding scoped to the style block, the styles are automatically scoped to this component, preventing them from affecting other parts of your app. The button is styled with inline styles, just like in React. So while both frameworks allow for class-based and inline styling, Vue's scoped styles give you more control over CSS encapsulation, helping you avoid unintended style leakage. Looping through arrays and rendering elements dynamically is a common task in any application. In React, you'd typically use the map function to loop over an array and render the elements. In Vue, we use the v4 directive to loop through the colors array and render a list item for each color. Just like in React, we use a key attribute to uniquely identify each list item. However, Vue's v4 syntax is more declarative, making it clear that we're iterating over an array within the template itself. Let's dive in into handling events in React and Vue, starting with a simple click event to increment a counter. In React, 
you'd use the useStateHook to manage the state and an event handler to update it. In Vue, we use the ref function to create a reactive count variable and the increment count function to update it. The at click directive in the template is used to listen to the click event, which triggers the increment count function. Just like in React, clicking the button increments the counter, but Vue's syntax is a bit more concise, especially within the template. In React, we can use the useRef hook to create a reference to a DOM element, and then use useEffect to manipulate it once the component is mounted. Here, useRef creates a reference to the input element, and useEffect ensures that the input field is focused as soon as the component mounts. We access the DOM element through inputElement.current. In view, we use the ref function to create a reference to the DOM element and the unmounted lifecycle hook to focus the input field once the component is mounted. Instead of input element dot current, view uses input element dot value to access the DOM element. In React, you can conditionally render elements directly within your JSX by using logical operators. In this example, we use logical operators to conditionally render appropriate message based on the value of light. The next light function cycles through the traffic light states and the corresponding message is displayed. Now, let's compare that to how conditional rendering is done in Vue. In Vue, we use directives for conditional rendering. Here, vif, vlsif, and vlse are used to conditionally display the correct message depending on the light value. View's declarative syntax makes the conditions clear and easy to manage directly within the template. Let's take a look at how both React and Vue handle logic that needs to run when a component is mounted, such as fetching data or interacting with the DOM. In React, you would typically use the useEffect hook for this purpose. In this example, useEffect is used to set the component's page title state to the current document title when the component mounts. The empty dependency array ensures that this effect only runs once, when the component is first rendered. Now, let's see how Vue handles this with the unmounted lifecycle hook. In Vue, we use the unmounted lifecycle hook to achieve the same effect. Unmounted is a function that runs code after the component has been mounted, similar to how use effect with an empty dependency array works in React. Here we set the page title reactive variable to the document's title during the mount phase. Let's explore how React and Vue handle cleanup logic when a component is unmounted, like clearing intervals or event listeners. In React, you would typically handle this in the useEffect hook by returning a cleanup function. In this example, useEffect sets up a set interval to update the current time every second. When the component is unmounted, the cleanup function clears the interval to prevent memory leaks. Now, let's see how Vue handles this with the unmounted lifecycle hook. In Vue, the unmounted lifecycle hook is used to handle cleanup when the component is destroyed. Here, we create an interval to update the time every second. And when the component is unmounted, we clear the interval using onUnmounted. In React, you pass props to child components by including them as attributes on the components tag. In this app component, we pass four props to user profile, name, age, favorite color, and is available. These props are used within user profile to display personalized information. In React, you can use prop types to define the expected types for each prop, ensuring your component receives the correct data. Now let's see how Vue handles props. In Vue, we pass props similarly through attributes, but we use the colon symbol to bind dynamic values like age and favorite colors. For Boolean props like isAvailable, we can simply include the attribute without a value. Inside the child component, we use define props to declare the expected props. Views define props function allows us to declare the expected props and their types, similar to prop types in React. View also lets us define default values directly within the prop definition, making it easy to handle required props and fallback values. Let's explore how child components can communicate with parent components in React and Vue. 
specifically by emitting events. In React, this is typically done by passing callback functions as props from the parent to the child. Here's an example. In this app component, we pass two callback functions, onAnswerYes and onAnswerNo, as props to the answer button child component. When a button is clicked, the corresponding function is called, updating the parent component's state. The child component, answer button, uses these callbacks. The answer button component calls the on yes and on no functions when the buttons are clicked, effectively communicating the user's choice back to the parent component. Now, let's see how this is done in Vue. In Vue, we achieve the same result using the emit function to trigger events in the child component. Here we pass event listeners for yes and no, from the parent component to the answer button component, just like in React. Inside the child component, we use define emits to declare the events and then trigger them when the buttons are clicked. In Vue, the emit function allows the child component to trigger custom events, like yes and no. The parent listens for these events and updates the state accordingly. Content projection, or what's known as slots in Vue. This allows you to pass content from a parent component into a child component, creating flexible and reusable components. In React, content projection is done using children props. Here's an example. In this app component, we pass the text click me as a child to the funny button component. Inside the funny button component, we access the children using the children prop. Here the children prop allows us to project whatever content is placed between the opening and closing tags of funny button, making the component highly reusable. Now let's see how Vue handles this using slots. In Vue, we achieve the same result using the slot element. Here's the funny button component. In Vue, the slot element acts as a placeholder for content passed from the parent component. In this case, the text click me is passed into the funny button component and rendered where the slot is placed. Let's talk about fallback content when no children are provided in React and Vue. This is especially useful when you want your component to display a default message if nothing is passed into the slot. In React, you can handle this by using the children prop and providing a fallback if children is undefined or null. In this app component, we render two funny button components, one without children, and one with content. Inside the funny button component, we handle the fallback. In this case, if no children are provided, we render the fallback content, which is a span element displaying no content found. This ensures that the button still has some meaningful content even when nothing is passed in. Now, let's see how Vue handles fallback content in slots. In Vue, you can provide fallback content directly within the slot element. In Vue, if no content is passed to the funny button component, the fallback span element with the text no content found will be displayed. This fallback content is defined directly inside the slot element. Let's explore how React and Vue handle context sharing, which allows you to pass data deeply through your content tree without having to manually pass props at every level. In React, we can achieve this by using the context API. Here's an example. In this app component, we create a user context using React's create context function. We provide the user data and then update username function as context values using the user context dot provider. This allows any nested component to access and update the user data without needing to pass props down through every component. Inside the user profile component, we consume this context using use context. Use context allows us to access the shared data and the update username function from anywhere within the user context dot provider hierarchy. When the button is clicked, the username is updated across all components that consume this context. Now let's see how Vue handles context sharing using provide and inject. In Vue, we use provide to share data across components. In this example, we provide the user object and the update username function, making them available to all descendant components. Inside the user profile component, we use inject to access this provided data. Using inject, we retrieve the user and update username that were provided higher in the component tree. This works similarly to React's context, but with Vue's own reactivity system. Let's see how React and Vue handle form inputs and data binding. 
in both frameworks, you want to keep your input fields in sync with your component's state. In React, you typically manage form input with the useState hook. In this example, useState is used to track the value of the input field. The handleChange function updates the state every time the input changes, keeping the input field and the displayed text in sync. React's two-way data binding is done manually by setting the value prop and handling the onChange event. Now, let's see how Vue simplifies this with its vModel directive. In Vue, we use vModel for two-way data binding. The vModel directive automatically keeps the input field and the text variable in sync, without needing to manually handle the input events. When the user types in the input field, Vue automatically updates the text reactive variable, and the change is reflected in the template. That's it! I now dub you a Vue developer. Rise to your keyboard, like the video, and subscribe to my channel. Be seeing you in the next one.